I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. And be sure to use the TCG Affiliate Player link as it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Oh, welcome back everyone, playing some Adriana Captain of the Guard today. Weird opening hand, six lands and a Helm of Possession. I think I'm going to mulligan that one, as much as I do love Helm of Possession. This feels a little better. Two lands plus land tax, Stoneforge Mystic, some Knights. I think I like much better. So I've been talking about it for a while, I'll bring it up again. Sir Gwyn, great Voltron commander, I don't think it's a great knight commander. I actually think Adriana is a better knight commander if you're trying to spam knights and do that whole thing. Giving your knights additional power is really good, so uh, that's not a thing that Sir Gwyn does particularly well because you also need to be running a lot of equipments and make sure that you hit your equipments. And it just gets difficult to be doing both of those things at the same time, like especially in the early turns, maybe around turn 10 or so you could you have the mana to cast a knight, equip a knight and do all that sort of stuff and mess around with a bunch of things. But early in the game, you're really forced to choose between get an equipment or get a creature into play. And it's tough to do both. So uh, so anyway, I do think that Adriana is actually a better knight commander than uh, Sir Gwyn, as well as we see her in hand. Sylvia Brightspear and Corvath, I think, are also better knight commanders if you're really wanting to do the knight tribal thing. Because SNK and Adriana both pump your team, and that's not really a thing that Sir Gwyn does. She, she really rewards you for being very, very Voltron. So anyway, with all that, uh, that brings it to our turn one. Usually I go for the Ameri right here, but I want to get the land tax in because we don't have that many lands, so play the land tax, and we'll pass a turn like that. Ashling has themselves a pretty good turn. One goes Soul Ring into Dragon's Claw. Here comes a Kirk's Thumb for K and T. But in all cases of Night Tribal, uh, Night Tribal really has a problem with things just going over the top of it. Any sort of big play, big spell, big sequence tends to make knights look kind of bad. So if you're planning to build a knight tribal deck, you really want to be in like a very fair kind of setting. Uh, you don't want to be running into like too many unfair decks and uh, you're probably not going to want to see that much removal. Um, just, you know, some of the things. So like you don't want to see, you don't want to see a deck that ramps to nine mana on like turn four. That's going to be really bad for you. Um, with all that, Ashling coming into play drops a Skull Clamp. Going to equip the Skull Clamp. Uh, Ashling does not die, therefore they do not draw. They did not accomplish a whole lot with that particular line of play. Here comes a Sylvan Library for the Sisse opponent. Sure. That'll bring it back to our turn. Lantax time. Use the ability. Definitely need some red mana. Ooh, this deck is light on red mana. So we'll get both of those. We draw ourselves a knight. Sounds good to me. Play the red mana. Let's play Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, yeah, we got some choices right here. Uh, we got, I feel like I like Dowsing Dagger, but card draw is also good. We have the Immortal Sun for card draw. I'm feeling Dowsing Dagger. Uh, and then we have to discard down to seven. We have nine cards in hand. Oops, probably didn't want to discard this mountain. Um, let us discard this planes. I guess it's the mountain. I guess it's the mountain. So many double red costs are in this deck. Uh, a few. There's a few. And that's why we'll be needing the Dowsing Dagger, I guess. I need to rebalance the mana in this deck. Seven Dwarves coming in for the k &T opponent. A deck can have up to seven cards named Seven Dwarves. Also, they have a Crux Thumb in play. Kind of weird. Here comes a Swords of Plowshares on the Stoneforge Mystic. It's a little annoying. Here comes Ashling back to play. Yep. Opponent gains one life. Sylvan Library will trigger for the Sisse. Opponent's got Sheltered Airy. Enchantland has add two mana of any one color. Seems pretty good. Uh, we're going to land tax. I'm just going to go for one land right here. Actually, we'll go... Uh, does it help to go two? We'll go for one. I don't want to discard the hand size. Also, there aren't that many basics in the deck, apparently. So, want to play that really conservatively. Don't want to use the Sylvia just yet. That's kind of more of a late game sort of thing. Um, for the most part, at least getting Corvath. Plus, trying to get trying to cut down our hand size a little bit. So, I'm going to play the Ameria right here. We'll get the Dowsing Dagger. And we'll give the tokens to the K and T opponent. Since they've already got some stuff in the way anyway, they can now have two O2 defenders. Here comes K and T into play. Yep. Dwarves into the Ashling player. Uh, taking a look at what our opponents are playing, by the way. We, first up, we have Chaotix playing K and T. And, uh, I don't know, doing something with seven dwarves. I don't know what he's up to. We'll see as the game gets going. 
Uh, next up, we have Xenosai piloting Ashling the Pilgrim, uh, a deck that I still have built in paper and just a card that I love to play. If I need something a bit jankier, Ashling is what I'm going to. Um, and then finally, we have Champion of Thune piloting Sisei Weatherlight Captain. Don't know what they're up to yet, but Sisei, a super cool commander, also one that I have built in paper. Um, so fun decks abound. And this is going to be a jankier game uh, based on what opponents were telling me. I joined at the last second. Uh, they needed a fourth player, so here I am playing the game, but uh, we do get a K&T trigger on us, and we'll drop this land into play. Here comes a Well of Lost Dreams for opponent. Interesting. Ashling Life Gain? Kind of strange. Got a Dragon's Claw. Ashling does have a few ways to gain life. Flux it on Warhammer. Anything that gives it lifelink is pretty good, and uh, if you explode Ashling with lifelink, it's not uncommon to go above 100 life. I've done it a number of times. Because it hits every target, it hits each player and each creature, so pretty sweet in that regard. One of the few ways that the deck does actually win. Oh, I wonder if they're doing like an Aetherflux Reservoir kind of thing. That's not a card that I've added to my deck. My deck plays much differently than that, but it would probably still be good for those times when I do gain absurd amounts of life. Comes a Signet for opponent, yep. And a Solemn Simulacrum for opponent. Brings it back to our turn, a uh, Land Tax Trigger. I'll probably go for two this time. And there's a Boros Charm. That is a super helpful card. Um, let's play the planes. Let's get this Embereth Skyblazer into play. Opponent will gain a life off that. And next turn, the plan is going to be to try to flip the Dousing Dagger over. Opponent can draw with the Well of Lost Dreams if they want to. Sounds good to me. And they do. So that's in. We could have gone for Adriana this turn, but we really want the Flying to flip over the uh, Dousing Dagger. So I decided to go that way instead. Ooh, that's a Ristic Study for Chaotix. Uh, might need to shoot that with the Return to Dust at some point, but I wasn't really planning on doing that this turn. We'll see. K&T and Step Trigger. We'll stay with the lands, play the planes. Ashling's going to add a counter. Uh, giving mana to Ashling is a scary thing. That deck just wants mana. Just It needs to make more and more mana. So giving it mana, not a great idea. Oop, yep, opponent's going to play a Sword of Light and Shadow. It's a pretty good one. Ristic Study will trigger. Yeah, it looks like a life gain, Ashling deck. Hmm. Uh, I see a Snuff Out coming into play, and that's going to be on the Ashling. And that was coming from the Sisse opponent. That'll keep Ashling from exploding, which is good news. Ashling down, Ristic Study will get the draw. Here comes a Sylvan Library. Here's the Sylvan Library trigger. Uh, here comes a Shield Ridge. Ooh. So, looks like we're not flipping this Dousing Dagger over. I was going to send the Psalm Simulacrum our way. Yeah, we're going to take that because we don't want them reanimating that Psalm Simulacrum. So we're going to get with the Shielded Trigger, and we continue to not flip over the Dousing Dagger, which makes me very sad. There's a Soul Ring. Ooh, no Land Tax Trigger this turn? Ouch. Miscalculated for that. Um, well, I guess that means Soul Ring into the Immortal Sun. We can pay one... They get to draw one. Let's get the Immortal Sun. And we'll pay for the Ristic Study this time. There's a path on the Shield Rid. That's good news. That just can't stay in play. <laughs> Opponent will get a land out of it. And now that we've got some cost reduction, I'm feeling a little bit better about what we can do in this following turn. Here comes Mirror Maid. Enters the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. Gets themselves an Immortal Sun. That's a little scary. Comes a Sylvan Library. Oh yeah, we definitely don't have enough artifact and enchantment removal to uh, be dealing with all this stuff. K and T into Ashling and seven dwarves into Sisse. Go down to forty and thirty-one. K and T and step trigger. We're out of lands, so we'll take the draw. Opponent's gonna recast their Ashling. So opponent's artifacts will trigger. Well of Lost Dreams will trigger. Here comes Shalai, Voice of Plenty. Yup. Ristic Study will trigger. That's a Sword of Cauldra. Uh oh. Opponent doing the legendary blades thing? <laughs> I've given Champ quite a hard time with that deck. He uh, just struggles with it. It's got great late game. You just, you know, when you have Sisse and a bunch of mana, you can just keep getting things out of your deck, and uh, you can build it in a way to recur everything in, uh, in a way that is super sweet. So uh, we definitely don't want to let them go too late if we don't have to. Brings it back to our turn. Lantax will trigger. Uh, I think I'm going to grab the last two basics right here. Low number of basics in this deck. I could probably do some revisions to the mana base in this deck. Uh, then we get our Immortal Sun draw trigger. There's a Denitha. And one thing, I actually don't want to like... We're going to need all of our planes if we want to get this Ameria active. 
So this is five and six, and this one will get us a plateau, which is seven, so we don't want to discard any lands. So play a planes. We need to get two cards out of our hand to make all this happen. Uh, I think it's time the Rhystic Study goes down. Uh, the Light and Shadow could be a bit of an issue for us. I think that one's got to go also. Uh, getting the Immortal Sun would not be a terrible idea, but Light and Shadow is going to cause some real headaches in blocking. Uh, I'm not going to pay for the Rhystic Study. I'm just going to try to empty out as many cards from our hand as we can. So Light and Shadow and Rhystic Study into Exile. Let's get Denitha. Back down to seven cards in hand. Let's get Iroas. Uh, opponent gains a life off of the Dragon Claw. They can draw a card with the Well of Lost Dreams if they have mana. They do not. Uh, we're going to play the Steel Shaper's Gift. Sword of the Animist is a dead card. Fire and Ice is pretty good. Feast and Fam is pretty good. Sigiled Sword of Valoran is not terrible. Mask of Memory is solid. Lightning Grief solid. No Sunforger in this deck. Uh, takes up too many deck slots when you're talking about Tribal and Knights and all that sort of stuff. I mean, Fire and Ice just seems so good with what we're doing. The cost reduction from Immortal Sun is really, really good. Yeah, I think I want to keep the card draw going more than anything, so I'm thinking Fire and Ice right here. So yeah, we played out a bunch of cards, did not have to discard the hand size, so that all makes me super happy. Chaotix is about to draw a lot of cards. It's like card draw tribal over there with Immortal Sun, Sylvan Library, the Rhystic Study that we already shot, the K and T end step trigger. Oh my. The value. Oh, that's a Zakama. That's bad. Here comes a spark double copying Zakama. Uh, one will have to get sacrificed, though. Oh, nope, spark double does not sacrifice. More lands. Uh, Idealic Tutor seems bad. Gets himself a Zendikar Resurgent. No big deal. Here comes the Zendikar Resurgent. Ugh. Uh, I mean, someone's going to need a board wipe. Uh, copy Enchantment on the Zendikar Resurgent, now making tripled mana. Cycles of Sylvan Le Reclamation. Going to send the Seven Dwarves over to the Ashling opponent. Big problem right now is that, like, with the Zakamas, they can just shoot permanents that matter, which means anything we do has to start with a board wipe. And there are not tons of board wipes in this deck. We've got one, two. Uh, Elish Norn's about a half. Not going to help with the Zakamas. Um, three... Yeah, it looks like three. There was a fourth one in here at a, at one point in time. I did have Winds of Abandon. I uh, believe that is now gone. We do get to put a land into play from our hand. Going to go for the Bloodstained Mire. Opponent cracks a fetch. Chaotic says he doesn't have much to follow it up. I mean, the plan is cast a creature, you'll draw a bunch of cards, and then just cast all the creatures. Uh, Dark Steel Plate for our opponent. That's actually solid. Because... That can't be shot by Zakama, and once it's on the creature, the creature can't be shot. He can respond to it if he wants. And if he does that, that will tap out mana, which is good, which means we might be able to make some sort of play. Gonna move the Dark Steel Plate. Let's see if opponent responds. Does not, so Ashling is equipped. Ashling is safe from the nonsense. Sylvan Library will trigger. Need opponent to find some big draws right here. That's a survival of the fittest. That's probably a step in the right direction. Although, Bane of Progress would hurt us pretty bad, too. Activate Survival. Cadex is going to shoot the Survival. Yep. What is this? Steel Bane Hydra enters the battlefield with X counters on it. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Oh, spicy. Comes in X3. Going to shoot a Zendikar Resurgent. Sure. We crack our fetch. Uh, Going to do 3 damage to Shalai. Three more damage to Shalai, one trigger remaining on the Zakamas, and three damage to the Hydra, okay. And I'm uh, gonna shoot our Immortal Sun. Yeah, we needed that. We did need that. We're gonna get our Sacred Foundry tapped. Uh, gonna send the Solemn Simulacrum over to us. We will block said Solemn Simulacrum. They get to draw a card. Brings it back to our turn. Double check on land tax, make sure there's no lands in the deck. There are not. And of course we draw a land. Ouch. Let's play this planes. This will be the seventh planes. Uh, I mean, he can just lay waste to everything in play. Seems pretty awful. I think we're going to go Sword of Fire and Ice. Equip Sword of Fire and Ice. Get the Dousing Dagger on there. Uh, we could play Quendi to get an extra card draw. I don't know if that helps. 
Uh, I don't feel like it does. Red, 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 green, green. That is unfortunate. Um, gonna have to hit the Ashling player one time. Get this card draw. Flip over this Dousing Dagger. Dousing Dagger hit. So we hit. Dousing Dagger flips. Sort of fire and ice will trigger. Shoot Chaotix in the face. Uh, we draw an Embereth Shield Breaker. We can destroy an artifact. That's something. Dousing Dagger will flip. We're going to use the adventure mode on this Shield Breaker. Uh, let's destroy an artifact. Let's get rid of the Immortal Sun. Uh, and that'll allow opponent to gain one life and trigger the Well of Lost Dreams. Um, the next thing, we probably need to get Sylvia in. Um, or we could get Adriana. Yeah, we have exactly enough mana for Adriana. And then we're going to sit on the Boros Charm. And, I mean, potentially with, like, a big play next turn, we could go Sylvia, grab Corvath, and try to bring in the damage. I think is really going to be our best bet. Here comes Tribe Elder, draw a card, yep. Sack a Tribe Elder. Here comes Wood Elves, yep, draw another card, get another land. Ooh. Here comes a Wear. Uh, that's going to be on our Sword of Fire and Ice, cool. How much mana does he have left? How crucial is this to the plan? Not that crucial, I don't think. So let that go. See if he starts shooting our creatures now. Yep, okay, now he's going to start shooting our creatures. Now we Boros Charm. That'll trigger the Dragon's Claw. And yeah, he can activate over the top of it, but I'm sure he was probably planning to do other stuff, so it'll, uh, it'll throw his plans off a little bit. And yep, there we go. So he activates again. Going to do three to Adriana. And does not finish Adriana. Interesting. Uh, Zakama, 10 10 trample coming in. Cool. Two Zakamas coming in. Yep. Block one of them. It's only going to block one damage, but might as well, right? Uh, I'm going to do a little check before. Chaotix drops a Makokoro in. I wonder. No, he's got seven cards. I doubt he draws a card. Um, okay. So the things we're going to do, we're going to get a creature back. We're going to play Sylvia. Sylvia will be 6, Corvath will be 9. It's 9 total mana. We'll have 14 total mana, uh, which is enough, I think, to go Sylvia, Corvath, and then we get the Embereth back. We can pump the Embereth. So I think we take the card draw right here. The mana is not as relevant, because if we run into a board wipe, then life will be much, much better. Ashling untaps with 11 cards in hand. Hopefully one of them is a board wipe. Uh, is going to Miracle a Reforge the Soul that will mess up our plans, I think. Although, seven new cards, not terrible. Actually means we can put Sylvia into the graveyard, we won't have to cast Sylvia. Gonna gain a life with the Dragon's Claw. Well, of Lost Dreams will trigger. Uh, we get wheeled, what do we find? Uh, Paladin and Vec is protection from red, which means it can't get shot by, uh, Zakama. Seems pretty relevant. Valiant Knight is another way is an anthem and gives team double strike. There's some reasonable stuff here. Uh, that's a mana geyser for opponent. Yep. Gonna get a lot of red mana. They could probably blow everything up with Ashling right here if they wanted. Uh, actually, no, because they will need... No, because of the way the Ashling works, they won't be able to get enough counters on it, I don't think. Yeah, you can only blow it up once each turn without having to recast it, so... 28 red mana, six cards in hand. Let's see what they can do. Uh, and they can draw every time they cast a red spell. Maybe this deck needs a Mana Geyser. A lot of white in this deck, though. Not tons and tons of red. Golem's Heart, whenever a player casts Spell, you may gain a life. Cool. But that's about to start doing some work. Opponent plays a Dire Fleet Daredevil. Let's see what they target. Anyone got a board wipe in the graveyard? Uh, there's a Snuff Out in the graveyard. That's a thing that kills one creature. It's Path to Exile in Opponent's Graveyard. And a Swords. Opponent's going to grab the Swords of Plowshares. It's going to cast the Sword of Plowshares, targeting the Zakama. We'll gain them a bunch of life, which makes the alpha striking them much harder. Equip the Skull Clamp to the Dire Fleet Daredevil. It'll draw them two cards. Here comes a Kraken's Eye. Oh my. Gollum's Heart Triggers. At some point, Chaotix may want to shoot this Well of Lost Dreams. Seems like a pretty reasonable engine at this moment in the game. Here's a Blade of the Blood Chief. Yep. Opponent draws. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought about that. So if you put Blade of the Blood Chief on Ashling and then you pop Ashling, 
uh, it'll get huge for each thing that dies. And there's a lot of small stuff on board. So even just going Ashling for three would put a bunch of counters back on it, which is pretty cool. It comes a Hedron Archive. Yep. Draws a card. It comes a Chaos Warp on the Zendikar Resurgent. I like that. We need to get rid of that Zendikar Resurgent. The doubled mana is really the problem. Sakama's so good and it's annoying, but creatures can be dealt with. Enchantments are much harder to deal with, and the doubled mana, super big problem. I tell you what, once Ashling gets going, we do not have great answers for jamming our knights through Ashling, other than this Paladin and Vec. <laughs> if Ashling just blows the board up every turn, that's a real problem for us. Uh, that's Alhammerit's Archive. That seems really good. Cracks the Hedron Archive, draws two more cards. That'll be four cards. <laughs> seems pretty good. There's a Sir Conrad in Sisse's graveyard, which makes me nervous. I don't really know what they're up to. Again, I hope it starts with a board wipe. We need to get rid of this Sakama. So Sylvan Library will trigger for them. Here comes a carry added. Means probably no board wipe. Spark double. Uh-oh. Get themselves a Sakama. Ashling just gaining a million life. Uh, interesting. Becomes a copy of the carry added. Oh, you control. Okay. Whew. That's much less scary. That's a Feast and Famine. Ashling up to 50. And a Truth and Justice. So, yeah, some sort of Sisse Voltron. Brings it back to our turn. A merry a time. Who to get? I don't know if we're on the big turn yet or if the big turn is still a moment away. Uh, I say get Sylvia. Not going to use the land tax. Use the Ameria ability. Sylvia comes in. We will partner and grab Corvath. Grab Corvath. Drop return, that's a Mirren Crusader. Uh, Mirren Crusader has protection from green. Seems really good. Let's play Mirren Crusader. Play this Sky Knight Legionnaire. Actually, yeah, Chaotix is holding mana up, so like we can't really just like blast him. Uh, what we can do is play this Mask of Memory. One's going to gain some life. Let's play this Corvath. Chaotix is going to shoot Sylvia. Oh, nice. He, he's out of activations. That's good. Uh, shooting Corvath is the one we really need to keep alive. Ashling gets bigger. Uh, no partner. Let's get the Sky Knight Vanguard. Put the Mask of Memory on the Mirroring Crusader. Go to combat. Uh, as much as I want to attack with Iroas, I think we need to leave Iroas as a blocker. Yeah, because it just gets chumped by small stuff. So Iroas is going to stay back. Melee is going to trigger a bunch of times. We get to put some knights into play. Uh, Ashling can have the knights since they're at 58. Ashling's going to block our... Oh, it's got menace. Oh, I forgot Zakama has reach. But uh, Iroa's doing good for us right here. Taking care of a lot of that. Mask of Memory will trigger. Uh, we draw Lena and Circle of Loyalty. Let's discard... I don't think we need Scavenger Ground being that our Ameria is active. And hit number two, there's a Vanquisher's Banner and a Sigil Sword of Valoron. Uh, I'm going to discard the Lena, since Lena's pretty expensive mana-wise. We'll try to get Lena back from the graveyard. Cadex goes down to 19. Pretty big hit. Uh, I'll play the Windbrisk Heights. Two lands, Lightning Greaves, Thran Dynamo. Lightning Greaves probably the best of the bunch right there. And we'll pass the turn. Uh, we can do some stuff next turn. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, we have any legendary spells? No legendary spells in hand. But the Circle of Loyalty will be what? White, white? It'll have minus three, so it'll be one white, white. It's not too bad. Uh, potentially we could play a knight before we get it in. Uh, he's going to Buried Ruin for a Mirror Gallery. <laughs> what? So clones of legendary stuff, I assume. Here comes the Mirror Gallery. Yep, opponent going to gain some life. Here comes a mirror image. Oh, yeah, here we go. Hendra's Battlefield, copy any creature you control. Here comes a copy of Zakama. Yep, lands on tap. Whenever you cast a spell, populate. Cool, this is an ETB. It's an ETB. Uh, it's not a token yet. Okay. I'm sure it will be soon. Each player is going to draw a card. Okay, there's a signet. We did not need a signet. Basically just food for Zakama. Seven dwarves. More seven doors gifts to populate. Gonna send the Zakama our way. Yep. Block with Iroas. We go down to 23. We're starting to bleed a little bit with uh, if Ashling gets pumped up, it's gonna be an issue. 
K and T end step trigger. I've been trying to decide between the card draw and the land. The land is nice. I think I'm on the card draw, honestly. Still looking for that board wipe. And we can just play the land on our next turn. Here's the Knight of the White Orchid. Well, <laughs> Glimmer Post in for an opponent. So I think the plan is going to be to get Lena. Lena gives us some protection against Ashling. Ember at Skyblazer is also not terrible. Sakama so holding up mana, though. Seems unlikely. Yeah, I think Lena is going to be the best bet. You can protect a number of our creatures. I think now we're looking for Aurelia. Get an extra combat in there, and now we're going to be talking about some damage. <laughs> That's a stuffy doll. Nice. Let's see who they choose. Want to uh, pump Ashling? Yep. Uh, they chose Chaotix. Okay. Pump Ashling again. Uh, Chaotix is going to Boros Charm. That seems rushed. It's going to populate. I'd wait till Ashling explodes before doing that. Really starting to pile up these uh, plant tokens that we gave him early on. Boros Charm resolves. And opponent does not explode Ashling. Ashling's up to 11 cards in hand. That's terrifying. They're actually starting to become the threat, as bad as the comma is. Giving Ashling time and mana and cards is also bad. We'll see what sisay has got lined up. They've got a Feast and Famine, so they'll be able to make quite a few plays this turn. They've also got a Sword of Cauldra, which exiles stuff. Sylvan Library will trigger. Oh, that's a Saskia. I mean, they probably have to choose Ashling right here. Yep, equip the Feast and Famine. See if maybe this gets shot. Gonna equip the Truth and Justice. Gonna give a Vigilance and Haste and 2-0. Gonna play a Shaman of the Forgotten Ways. That's scary. Well, that'll cut people's life totals down if opponent activates it. And a Steel Shaper's Gift. Gets a Warden Piece. Uh, does choose Chaotix with the Saskia. Let's see where he attacks. Gonna attack into Chaotix. And this will probably force him to shoot one of the swords. Uh, he's just going to Teferi's Protect himself. Okie dokie. I wish we had a way to give our stuff lifelink. So that attack's going to fizzle big time. Unfortunately, we don't really have... Uh, yeah, we don't have the level of protection that I'd like on our stuff. That will bring it back to our turn. Let's get that Lena. The biggest thing we need to do... Oh, that makes a lot of tokens. The biggest thing we need to do right now is keep our stuff alive. That's a Wheel of Fortune. Uh, two opponents are low on cards. Ashling is not... We have a lot of cards. I'm not really incentivized to Wheel of Fortune in this moment. Chaotix isn't in play, so I don't even know if the Knight of the White Orchid is going to work. We have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 lands versus... Looks like 9 lands and... Looks like 11 from the Sisse opponent. So I don't think we're going to get any benefit off of Knight of the White Orchid yet. We're going to hold on to that one. Oh, what are we doing? We need to think about this. Like, we could probably kill the other two players but then we get picked apart by zakamas and then if we don't the board probably just gets wiped which isn't amazing uh you know what maybe we try let's see what other protection spells are in this deck we have an eerie interlude we have it to various protection we need to find ours our protection spells okay so in that case let's vanquisher's banner choosing knight Play the Makokoro, get the Signet, opponent gains a life. I don't know, maybe we try to take the other two out, then just deal with Sakama. Um, let's play this Valiant Knight. Uh, actually, no, we won't have the mana for Double Strike and Valiant Knight, so play the Paladin and Vec. We will draw a card. Oh, it's an Aggravated Assault. Um, hmm, that changes things. Five, six... Seven. We've only got seven mana open. That's not enough to activate Aggravated Assault. Mm. Any ways to generate additional mana? Uh, let's play... Yeah, let's play this guy. Opponent will gain a life. Bunch of things trigger. Here's a Cavern of Souls. Do some attacking. We need to make sure we don't die. Uh, so we're going to have to leave up some blockers as well. Leave that back. That's a good blocker. Leave that one back. Send that one into Chaotix. And this one over there. Leaves us a bunch of tokens on the ground. Leaves us some blockers. I like that. Bunch of triggers going off. We can maintain this board state until next turn and get the Embreath back. And uh, then get Aggravated Assault and the Embreath. That's lethal amounts of damage. Hoping to find our Teferi's protection in all of this. Mask of Memory will trigger. Come on, big draw. 
Uh, yep, we uh, missed those. Feast and Famine would have been really good at the start of the turn. Um, what do we discard? Discarding Cavern, because I'm just going to be looking for Teferi's Protection anyway. A Mask of Memory triggers once again. Uh, Aurelia and Land. Yeah, those would have been good at the start of the turn also. I think Sigil Sword of Valoran is the least impactful right here, so we'll get rid of that. We have nine cards in hand. Uh, which means I guess means I guess we play the Urza's Incubator. Nope, oh, it's freaking out. Also choosing Knight. Oh, we could have did that differently and got the uh, Lightning Greaves. Whoops. Guess we discard the Knight of the White Orchid. Only one card left in the deck. Windswept Heath can find it. Here's a Sylvan Tutor for Chaotix. Uh, this is a Truth and Justice in play, and we have almost entirely white creatures. Whoops, should have left a red creature back. Could have left this guy back. Here's an Avacyn. <laughs> that's a good one. Activate the Makokoro. Sword of the Animus. That's a dead card. Here comes Avacyn. Oh boy. Yeah, we probably should have killed Sisse because we duh, they can just come in and do tons and tons of damage. And a Chromatic Lantern. Oh my, that's a Blasphemous Act. Uh, Saskia is not protected from it. Okay. Um, we're probably going to get destroyed by Ashling, but... Gotta try, right? Sacrifice Lena. Oh, this is gonna set Ashling up so good. Ashling needs to explode one time. Uh, Ashling just needs to explode on their turn, and they're gonna do so much damage. Oh, actually, no, because uh, chaotic stuff will survive. So, a number of things die. Blade of the Blood Chief gets four counters. Stuffy Doll is gonna do 13 damage to Chaotix. You can just tap the Stuffy Doll after that. Oh, it's summoning six, so I need to wait one turn, but it's going to be bad for us. Chaotix is at one. Sisei's stuff is down. Everything our way, really? Ugh. Okay, okay. Oh, we're blocking things with trample. Yeah, okay, what are we doing? Bunch of seven dwarves coming in. Found out a way to block that makes sense. We're going to get trampled a little bit, but we've soaked up quite a bit of the damage. But we're going to get punished by Ashling. Uh, we survive at 7. K and T and step trigger. Uh, yep, we're in Ashling range now. Yeah, okay, Ashley, uh, Ashling's gonna win. So Ashling just needs to attack the Sisse and then explode. And that should do it. Uh, we'll drop the land. I don't think anything we do matters at this point. So, opponent activates Ashling three times. We go down, it explodes. Uh, opponent did forget to attack Champion of Thune, though. They could have just ended it in that swoop. Ah, uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, Night Tribal. That is the struggle of Night Tribal. You play a knight, they play as a comma or a shield raid, and that was fairly early into the game. Uh, we were just trying to get that Dowsing Dagger flipped over, had a real hard time doing that, slowed us down a lot. And, uh, yeah, people just going over the top is a thing. We could have attacked differently on that last turn. Probably, I probably should have set up in a way to get double strike and just try to take the other two players out. But then we still have to blunt the assault from Chaotix, and I don't know that we can do that. Um, tough win, like, not a ton of removal. We really needed that board wipe to happen and just kind of reset things, and it never came. Um, no one played one, so it's just tough. It's a tough place to be. So, opponent's going to send in the Ashling. Opponent's still at 11. This will bring him down to 6. Opponent's Sylvan Library trigger. They'll get one crack at it. Ashling's still at 39. It's going to be tough. There's a Sir Gwyn. That's a reasonable start. Equip, equip all the swords. Give it haste. Untap all the lands? It's not awful. Sort of War and Peace coming into play. Uh, seasons passed. I believe that is a mistake. Opponent should have used the Slayer's Stronghold right there. Opponent's gonna equip all the stuff. Yep. So, I think that's actually, that's a pretty big miss. Opponent not using the Slayer's Stronghold, because they'll get all their lands untapped, and they've still got six cards, plus Sisse in their command zone. You can do a lot with that. So, opponent punting it right there. Any hope they may have had, I believe, is gonna be gone. Um... They might have a little bit of time, just because of the way Ashling is tapped right now. Now it's got three counters on it. Yeah, no, they just need to blow up for six. Add three counters and blow them all up. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Point can activate Ashling. Do it again. And, yeah, they just scoop. Uh, 
Yeah, so we could have done our last attack differently. It's tough because we knew what we knew what Chaotix had, and Zakama is an issue for us. Maybe we should have just went for the big swing and tried to go on for the double strike and take out the other two players because letting them untap two is also just going to cause problems for us. So who knows? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.